Welcome to the third episode of Grasshopper Tips and Tricks. My name is Chris and in this video I'm going to talk about one of the most important things in design process. Collaboration. The first step to good collaboration in Grasshopper is a clean script. You are not always going to work alone and your colleagues need to understand the way of your thinking. In previous episode I shared my tips on how to manage the order in scripts. If you missed that one, watch it by clicking somewhere here. If you've done it already, here are my five tips on good collaboration in Grasshopper. Enjoy! Let's start from most important one. Data input output. With many Grasshopper users working simultaneously, the question arises. How do we all manage to work on the same model? Data input output component comes to the rescue together with the following workflow. On screen we can see some of the data with geometry. All data will now be connected to the data output component and Grasshopper data file will be generated and saved on the server. Every time we change data in the data output component, Grasshopper file will be updated automatically. Consequently, if someone has started writing their own script, they can easily download data from data input file by choosing the correct destination of Grasshopper data. If someone's work depends on information from someone else, they simply ask for a Grasshopper data file, not for the whole script. The biggest advantage is that the data output is updated in the real time and thus all the users work on the latest version of data. When organizing your spaghetti, you should definitely use color labels for grouping. Making a group of components is a one thing, giving correct colors another. I recommend creating one template in your company so that the same colors are always used for predefined groups. Start with this template every time a new script or cluster is created. For example, ye yellow for initial data from Rhino, red for initial data for Grasshopper, another for steps, yet another for output, and so on. You can make it manually or write a small script which will do it for you. All you need to do is write the correct name of the group and color will change automatically and the whole script will be in order. Usually we create scripts from left to right and it's kind of obvious that the next user should follow this pattern. When scripts become bigger it will not be that easy. A good practice is to make a sequence on your group's name to follow the script in the right direction. This can be for example be a number, but it can be also be a combination of numbers and letters. Use label groups function to auto-create a scribble in the upper left corner of a group that matches the group's name. Mark all groups and run the component. After that, it will be easier to spot the right group because the label is bigger and will be more visible in the script. You can find label group component in MetaHooper package. Another useful tool is jump to component. Just by double clicking the button, a window will jump to the next point you defined. In that way, you can keep order in the right sequence and it will be easier to the next user to understand the script. Number four, bifocals. Everybody knows the battle between Apple and Microsoft users. And every Grasshopper user knows the battle between icon display versus text. Which one is your natural choice? Let me know in the comments below. Now, this fight is officially over thanks to bifocals plugin. No matter what your preferences are, now you can see both icons on the component and the text above it together. The war is officially over. You can also make some modification and hide components names which you think are redundant. You can make it simply by connecting component name to bifocals. In this case, let's hide names for curves and move component. And my favorite one, 
sketches. Making sketches on your script can be a useful visual solution. In a huge script, it will be easier to refer to particular parts in your construction. The first step is to create a sketch object. The second step is to import the whole DVG file to Rhino and export it to a Grasshopper script. It can be for example the whole bridge or just a small cross section where you can refer to your script. With extra arrows you can show which part of the structure refers to which part of the script so that it's easier to your colleagues to work in your script. That's all for today. Remember to subscribe to this channel not to miss the next episodes. Have you ever collaborated with someone in Grasshopper? What are your tricks for the best collaboration flow and the, what are the biggest challenges? Share in comments below. Thanks for watching, see you next time. Have a good one.